Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. But you already know that, don't you? Because that's why you've tuned in. Today I'm joined by Sean from Barnsley. How are you doing, Sean? Fantastic, Ross. Good. Did you watch any boxing at weekend? Yeah, I watched it all, yeah. What did you think to uh, Eddie Earns show? It was all right, it was all right. Yeah, you enjoy it, yeah? Uh, do you want to go through, we'll go through the fights that were on the Eddie Hearns show, uh, we'll keep it short and sweet today. We'll go through the fights and we'll talk about what we both liked about it and if we thought it were any good. Which what first fight up? Ridings, what it... Ridings rough. against uh, Smith. Yeah. Ridings 3-0 against Smith, 11-2-1. Uh, Smith beat him, didn't he? On points, over six rounds. Yeah. Where I think that fight has gone wrong is you've got a kid with who's three and oh and only done two only done twelve rounds as a pro. Not got a stoppage. He's going in with a kid, eleven, two and one, who's done plenty of rounds and fought better class opposition. And he's schooled him over six rounds. But fighters and managers are now having to roll the dice because we want to get paid. And there's going to be lots more fights like this down the line. Normally, a 3 and 0 kid don't go in with a kid 11 and 2. Not when he's just had three fights at four round each fight and not got a stoppage. He's still learning his craft. So Ben Ridings were at his depth. He was at his depth. But this is the times we're in. What do you think, Sean? Well, I think it's due to coronavirus and the matchmaking's terrible at minute and they're just throwing anybody in. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, like I said, they've got to roll the dice now, haven't they? There's got to be some grey areas, but it's going to be hard, but looking at some of these fights, kids are getting thrown in with people that they've got no chance against. And When I saw that fight made, I thought, oh, that's a tough one for him. But, Kamikaze matchmaking yet again, but... He took the challenge, he got beat, and he'll come back from it. But would they have done that with a three and now Olympian? No, they wouldn't. Would they? No. Right, so, all right then, what went next fight? Liam Davis. Liam Davis. Liam Davis, eight and out oh against Kern, seven and two. He retired, he didn't he, in the sixth round. What did you think to that fight? Because you like him. It was for English title as well, wasn't it? I think he was a good stoppage by referee, Russ, because he was getting peppered. And I just thought uh, he, he, he was a good fighter, strong fighter. He took a shot, and I think he's one to look out for in the future. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So you enjoyed the fight, did you? Yeah, yeah. I thought he was brilliant. I thought, he were br I thought his, var his variety was fantastic. Davis is. Have you uh, sanitised your hands today? So, don't talk to me about sanitising, Russ. I've had coronavirus twice. It's terrible. I'm sick. Of, I've, I've sanitised the wall. Yeah. Oh, I thought you could only get it one. No, I got it in May. I got long COVID in May. Me and my brother and my wife didn't get it. And then me and all my family went away, uh, 10 of us, to a caravan site in September. And I got it, got it again. It's not till at me. I've been able to exercise, Russ, and uh, I've been getting brain fog and forgetting a lot of things and mixing a lot of things up. That's why I think I was so bad last week. <laughs> well, you've been getting all mixed up about things and that, yeah? Yeah, I've been getting brain fog and forgetting stuff. Going into a room and forgetting. I've been getting brain fog, going into a room and forgetting things. Yeah, that's uh, not good, that is it, Sean? Have you had coronavirus, Russ? Yeah, I've had it October 3rd. I Did you work? So, till uh, I, was, I was bad a couple of weeks. So. Did you oh, suffer I, with headaches? Did you suffer with a brain fog and headaches? I've had them since I was 15, mate. <laughs> oh. Right, getting back to boxing. Uh, Liam Davis moves on then, doesn't he? So we wish him well. What were the next fight up? Fabio Wardley. Against? Uh, 
Richard Larte, 14 and 3. That's it, yeah. What do you think to that fight? Because it ended quick, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I like what I saw the walk with. He looked uh, neat and tidy. What did you think, Sean, to the stoppage? Did you think it would have died or did it connect? I just think it would have cash out the hill. A cash out? Well, a, I just think it... three, a 14 and 3 fighter cashing out? Well, I just think that uh, he's lost against the boys, and he? he lost his last fight, and yeah. I just thought he was lapping limelight up on his ring walk, and I just thought that he, he wasn't interested when he uh, started engaging. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, all right, then, moving on. What was next fight up? The Savage. I am the Savage. I turn into <laughs> Savage. What do you think about this Savage 5 and 0 fighting Tom Little 10 and 8? Obviously, he got him out of there, didn't he? But in round three, Just, but what did you think about the actual fight? Because we heard all these rumours that Tom Little was stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet eating kangaroo meat. Now, what 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 happened? What do you think, Sean? You got your chance now. I think Eddie's just trying to profile Babic and get a name for himself, but at the end of the day, it was just another slugfest, and I thought every undercard needs a slugfest, right? But I just think that Babic, minute he moves up to the next level, is going to get punished. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't rate him as a fighter. He's all right coming through in lever, but that's about it. Yeah. What did you think about uh, after, sorry, during the fight, people were on Instagram or whatever, uh, Dave Allen saying he's going to come out of retirement and fight Babbage if Eddie Hearn gives him a job. What do you think about that? Well, I, I thought Dave Allen had retired, but I just think it's theatre. Don't you, Russ? Yeah, I mean, how could Dave come back after that? After saying all that. Nothing against Dave Allen. I've said it before and I'll say it again on this programme. He's fantastic in front of camera, but I don't think he's took boxing serious. And he's just a human punch bag. He yeah. should have packed in after David he should have packed in after David Price. Yeah, it's sad to see. All right then, so Babic moves on. What next for Babic the Savage? Well, I don't really know, Russ. I just think they're going to have to move him up a level because they've hyped him up that much, but I just think he's going to get punished. What do you think for Tom Little next? Skid Row? Yeah, he's the same as David Allen. I'm sorry to say it like I like him. He, he, well, I was going to say he tried, but he looked out of shape and he, did, he, he didn't look it. I like, it the, I like Tom Little, me, you know. I think he's a character. He's a capable fighter, but... I'm wondering if there might be some mental block with Tom Little's brain. You know, when he when he gets on fight night, he doesn't seem to pull it out at back. Well, he's ten and nine now, so that's journeyman form, isn't it? That. Of course it is. Of course it is. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I do like him. I've I've seen him before, and I do like him. He's uh, it he, he does try, but I don't think he lives and breathes it, Ross. Yeah. It's a shame, isn't it? Because he says he's never trained. Dave Allen says he's never trained. And we've got, and we've now got fighters that are popular on social media, but they're not training and they're not taking it serious. So promoters are just throwing them out there. Is this where boxing's headed? Yeah, yeah. It's the same scenario when they're getting when they get taking fights on a week's and two weeks' notice, and they're not in shape. A fighter should always be in shape. I saw Tom Little on pads in Bulgaria, right, outside the hotel we were in. And I thought, he's all right. He's a big old lump, right, and, he, and he's got decent power. And I, just, and I thought, I remember talking to Dennis about it, and he said, Tom Little's capable, you know. I said, yeah. And the fight fell through, and he never fought in Bulgaria. It was because of something that had gone on behind the scenes. His opponent had been nicked by Eddie Earn because it worked. It, 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 Mick Hennessy were working with Bulgaria, like one 
So Tom pulled out there for no, and I felt really sorry for him. But and I thought, you know what? If he could get his act again, we could do all right. So let's just hope this is just a blip and he got beat by the better man. But uh, maybe or oh, oh, that Tom took too much weight off because he's a likeable lad. He's a really, really nice kid. And he's one of them lads you could have a very good laugh with out the pub. But as regards boxing, I don't think he's done himself justice. And when he gets to about 50, my age, he might look back and think, do you know what? I should have done better. Could do better if tried. You know your school reports that you used to get in the seventies and eighties. It always have a comment at the end, wouldn't it? Could do better if applied himself. And I think that's gonna go down to Tom Little and maybe Dave Allen as well. And I, and I think wasted talent is a shame. That's what I think. What do you think, Sean? I think wasted talent is exactly the same. I think they'll look back when they get older and, 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 and they'll pinch the sentence and they'll think to themselves, Russ, why didn't I just put that extra 20% in or 30%? Yeah, yeah. All right, then. Uh, which brings us to Connor Ben. He went last fight on one it. So, Bobby and Tom Little were chief support on Sky. Then we've got Connor Ben. Who were what, what is 16 and 0? Yeah. Against that, who is it? Were he 22 and 1 or something? Four Miller. It were a masterclass from Conor Ben, wasn't it? Yeah, it were a masterclass, but they hyped, they hyped Four Miller up, Russ, to be something special, like when he fought Sean Porter. <laughs> I had a treble on, on, I had a bet on a treble, and I had Four Miller to beat Ben. They hyped him up, but before, after I put bet on, I went on YouTube and watched Formella, yeah? Yeah. And I realised that he had, he had feather dusters for fists. Who did? Formella. He couldn't punch. Yeah. It, they, they just, they just padded Conor Ben. I want to see Conor Ben be whacked on chin and be tested. Yeah. Because I've seen him be tested before and it didn't look good. Yeah. And I find him, I find him a bit arrogant and obnoxious at end. What did you think, Sean, at the end to Conor Bent's comments about he drives a Range Rover with you to seats? What does that, what were all that about? Well, I just found it, like I say, he was arrogant and obnoxious, yeah? And that way he was crying about that he hadn't seen his sister and he hadn't seen this and that. He's a fully grown man, Ross. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you've got it, you've got to take your sin away from all that. If you're going to be best, I've, I haven't seen my children before in time. Yeah, it's hard, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, and things like that. But it's life as we get older. Yeah, yeah, it's not good, is it? What did you think to him? Your honest opinion, Russ? I thought he fought all right, but the kid who were fighting couldn't punch for toffee. Conor Ben's been down against small punchers, light punchers. So if he's going to get dropped by Payanu, he's, he's, uh, he's a bit weak around the whiskers. So they're not going to put him near a puncher. That kid he fought weren't a puncher, were he? So he can, he can afford to do what he wants. If nobody's going to hurt you, you can just do anything. If you're in with a big puncher, you've got to be very careful. But... I said it had got to points and Conor Ben had, get, had beat him, but I said that he, the other kid would win but wouldn't get the decision, but I got it wrong. Conor Ben did win on points, like I said, but he, he deserved the win. So I got it wrong, didn't I? I got it right, but got it wrong, didn't I, if you know what I mean? So he won points. I knew he wouldn't stop him because Porter couldn't stop him, could he? And he's a massive puncher. So... Conor Ben knew he had to box. He couldn't blow the kid away because Porter couldn't blow him away. So it is what it isn't, but good luck to Conor Ben. Did he come across all right at the end? No, I didn't. No, I didn't like that. And I didn't like the interview he did with his dad where he said I beat I beat him up or something or punched him no. or whatever. I don't I don't like that. I thought he ridiculed his opponent and then going on about wealth and what he's got and all that puts me off him. He's a dick. So I don't yeah. like him. I don't I didn't exactly. like him anyway. I didn't like him anyway, and I'm not a fan of his old man. But what I liked his dad's style, I thought it was all action. But as regards when they opened the open the traps, nah, nah, they're money motivated all the time. That's all we talk about down there in Essex. Money. 
he's not my cup of tea. So I hope he gets knocked out by Josh Kelly. I think he will. I think he'll get stopped by Josh Kelly. So I know for a fact David Ivanishian writes him off, punches him upside down, they'll not go near him. All right. No. So and if he wants to fight Josh Kelly, well, he's doing Eddie Hearn a favour because they're getting Josh Kelly out of the Ivanishian fight, aren't they? So, but it is what it isn't. So, all right then. Uh, what do you think about moving on from Eddie Hearn's show? What would you get out of 10? Five. I know you'd say five. So you get a five, I'd get a four, stroke five. Uh, Joyce the bar this weekend. What do you think to that? Uh, I fancy the wise by a short margin, fifty-five percent to forty-five percent. Yeah, I think he's a good, strong fighter, the wise, but he's a he's a straightforward fighter. Yeah, there's no uh, special effects to the wise. I just think he's he throws yeah. in straight lines. All right then. Well, I think that Daniel Dubois beats him. Uh, that's where I'm going to go with. Uh, funding, Sean. What do you think about all this with funding that's not being put into boxing? And who's at fault? And where does boxing head now with no funding? Well, it's, I, find, I find it very ridiculous, Russell, that uh, boxing, I've got no funding. You sent, I got the... Uh, Message of you the other day by stating how much money there is. It's I used to I like I I couldn't pick back in time between football and boxing. They were both my famous favourite sports. But boxing is the favourite sport, hardest sport, and the most dangerous sport in the world. Yeah, yeah. It's the most entertaining and compelling sport. Yeah. And I just think that it's a disgrace that these this the, the no boxing in funding, for instance. For young kids growing up with a discipline and everything that goes with boxing, it saves a lot of lives and it helps a lot of people out, Russell, yeah? Yeah. And I just think it stinks. Like, I was going to mention to you about TV. Channel 5 is always good for boxing, but I can remember back in the day, we had ITV, Santana Sports and stuff like that. You have to pay for Box Nation and what have you now. And I just think that uh, it's getting left behind. And it shouldn't be get left behind because it's the best sport by far. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. It's uh it's not good at all. And I'm starting to worry for boxing now. Where's boxing heading now with no funding? I mean, but where are all these small old people gonna go? Are they gonna renew the licenses? Will the boxing have border will the boxing border control go under? Will we need a new load of people to come in and set a new one up with young people who can be trusted, who, who are not going to be biased towards certain people? You know what I mean? Well, with what you've been reporting on, Russell, about British border boxing control and, and more living up for expenses and good money and this and that, that's probably the only good thing that would come out of it if they made a new board. Yeah, maybe. Well, when you get in, well, it's all there for people to look at. When you've got expenses of working out at 18 grand a week, what are they spending that on? 18 grand a week on expenses for what? For what? It sounds like it. Fine wine and caviar. Well, we don't. We've no proof of that. But 18 grand a week is a lot of money to, for for to put through uh, uh, for expenses, isn't it? I think, but like I said, it is what it is, isn't it? Uh, anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, I just want to add... Uh, I watched a video on you recently about Josh Whale and I just think that it's a fantastic thing what he's doing for young people by putting classes on a week for unprivileged children that can't get money off the mums and dads because of the lifestyles and what have you, that he wants to go out his way and help children. What do you think, Ross? Well, 
That's you're talking about the free gym sessions that he's doing on a Friday, aren't you, for members of his community, for young kids that have got nowhere to go and can't afford to train and all that, aren't you? I think that's fantastic. Uh, I think that's really good. But he's a nice kid, Josh Whale, and obviously he's he's massive. He's massive news in Barnsley, and Josh. So it's, I think it's brilliant. I think it's brilliant what he's doing, and it's a pity that there's a lot of other boxers that. So a lot of other gym owners that don't do the same thing, but hopefully they'll cotton on instead of charging kids. If you ain't got no money, you can't train and all that. So I think it's good, and it shows you what type of person Josh Whale is. He's a nice kid. Never been in trouble. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't take drugs, don't go out partying. He, he, he's, he don't mess about with women. He's married with three kids, family man. And uh, he's somebody that I, I class as a personal friend of mine, a really close pal. Um, thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Well done. Thanks. Is it? Well, he's a pillar. He's going to end up a pillar in his community, Ross. What a great thing he's doing. He already is a pillar of community, but yeah, I see what I see what you mean, Sean. Yeah. But, he's going to. Go on. He's gonna uh, he's gonna be really respected for what he's doing. I think he's a, I think he's a fantastic fighter. I've watched a lot of his fights on Channel Five, and he always gives a good good uh, content of himself, Russell. And you can you'll see he lives take, in. You have to take one of your kids down there, or grandkids, or whatever, won't you? Um, well, what it is, my lad is ten years old. I got him into boxing. I learned him this and that. But since this technology's come along, I, I'd asked him at weekend if he wanted to go down, but. Children this day and age with technology, he shows me how to use it, Russell. All he wants to do is go on his iPad and his PlayStation. Yeah, no good. All right, well, listen, we'll give a big shout out to Dempsey Whale. If you want to eat healthily, go to DNA, Dempsey Whale's healthy eating place in Barnsley, Brampton Brelow. Delivered to your door, healthy food. Menus on back. So, all right, all you people that are fat as pig, Michelin men. Get your life sorted and start eating healthily with the DNA at Barnsley. You know it makes sense. <laughs> Bit of comedy there for you to end. Right, listen, we've got loads to do. Thank you very much for coming on, Sean. It's been a pleasure as always. Bit more professional today than your debut the other day, wasn't it? Yeah, I think I grounded my feet. I think I planted my feet a bit better. You Don't forget, Russell. Don't forget, Russell. Uh, my wife's washed that jumper, so if you want to borrow it for when you go on a family do over Christmas, you're more than welcome. No, I'm all right, mate. Well, listen, you, you'll keep it. Keep it as a family. Keep it keep it, and call it Old Faithful. Uh, call it your Old heirloom. Faithful jumper. Family heirloom. Family heirloom, hey, uh, that's the one. I oh. bought it, Russell, because it reminded me of my me, of me mum's Axminster carpet back in the 80s. A what? It reminded me of my mother's Axminster carpet back in the 80s. That's where I bought it. Did you? <laughs> yeah, you've had an Axminster, didn't you? Good. All right, then. Now, listen, I'm going to get off because if not, you'll be fucking you'll be keeping me here all day, you dripping tap. So, thanks for coming on, Sean. All the best. I'll see you again. Take care. Thanks for putting up with me, Russ. Take care. Bye. See you, mate. Bye.